Listen, I'm, I'm not trying to give you advice on whether or not it's time to call you Sarah to uh, help you out with your civilian employment situation. I am going to address this topic because it's something that I've been seeing, especially on forums lately, a lot. Boy, Sarah obviously is there to help you with your employment challenges are connected to your military service. Being a National Guard soldier and having a career profession or or just any job is challenging because sometimes inexperienced leaders make decisions not thinking about the second and third order effect. And sometimes the decisions, yes, they are made because of the needs of the National Guard. But sometimes, and I'm not saying most times, but there are times that it's made because of failure to plan by the leadership. And it creates strain not only in your home life, but also your civilian employer. Your civilian employer primary focus, whether or not they are veteran friendly organizations, they are in business for a specific cause or to turn a profit. The only ones that are in it for a cause and not for profit are non-profit organizations. But they still have a mission, they still have requirements to meet. So if you're an accountant for a non-profit organization and they need to rectify their books and you are the accountant and all of a sudden, hey, tomorrow for the next three weeks I can't be here because I have to do military duty because my leadership failed to communicate with me when my annual training is or was. You know, it creates a strain in that organization. Your job is protected, but it's unfair to the employer that your leadership is failing to plan. Uh, they're not there to be a welfare for veterans. They're there to perform a function. Uh, and the same thing for pro for profit organizations, just regular corporations. They're there to make money because their livelihoods, right? Not just yours, their livelihoods and the company's livelihood is dependent on them being able to provide a service or a good to the general population so they can turn a profit and stay alive. So understand that piece. Understand that when you are, even if you feel that, that you're just a number, understand that when you're making decisions and communicating your military uh, requirements to your employer. Talk to them early. Do you need an employee letter signed by the commander stating that you have military obligation and that you're not just trying to bail out of work. It's important that you do that early, you do that often, be open with your organization. If your employer is playing foul, they knew you are in the military and hired you, now they don't like the fact that you're gone just because they don't like it, despite you giving them your yearly training calendar, giving them employer letters and everything like that. That's maybe when it's time to call you Sarah, not necessarily to screw the company, but get some advice on how to better uh, handle that situation and if you are fortunate like me and you have human resources in your organization see if there's a veteran a human resources that could be your ally in helping you navigate through the system not to take your side and fight your boss but rather uh, give you guidance as an employee on how to handle the situation either in the military or in with your boss uh, sometimes it's just a lack of communication that causes a lot of issues that I, I'm seeing the other thing too is how are you as an employee if you are a garbage employee you know your boss may not be a big fan and he may be looking to fire you because you're not performing regardless of your military service you're not performing to the level that you should to continue being a member of the organization. And listen, I struggle from this too. I've gone through multiple deployments. My boss was left holding a bag. As a matter of fact, my first deployment, my boss just hired me. I was It was in the same organization. He knew I was in the military and I applied for the job, I got it. It was probably within a month or two, I was walking up to his office, he's like, hey, I'm hearing rumors of deployment. Here I am, a brand new employee trying to impress my boss. And I'm walking in his office saying, hey boss, thank you for the job, but I may be taking off. And by the way, at that point, I didn't have any orders. I wasn't select, I wasn't put, in, I wasn't put on any DMDs. We were still figuring things out, but I got an alert saying, hey, there's a possibility of deployment. I'll get ready to report. My boss knew before anyone in my family knew. He could make plans for his department uh, based on information that I was given. It wasn't a surprise. I didn't just show up to the his office last minute saying, hey, next week I'm gonna be gone for a year and a half. It wasn't like that. I, I was continually communicating with him. He had more information than anybody else in my family. If you're not doing that, then it's understandable that your boss 
may be frustrated with your military service. And if you're not performing well because you're dropping a lot of tasks that you should be doing, but you're not because you're distracted with something else, then it's understandable your boss is frustrated. It may not be related to your military service. It may be related to the fact that you're not performing up to the level that you should. So before you call your salary, you need to look at these things. You need to see what else you can do to help your boss understand uh, your military service. It's called leading up the chain. A very basic concept of helping your boss understand what you understand. It is your responsibility to communicate with your employer as early as you can, as effective as you can, so they understand your situation. And if you do want to call you Sarah, you can call you Sarah just for guidance, not necessarily just to burn your boss or burn your company or try to sue somebody. But the last thing I want to leave you guys with is, what are you doing to acknowledge your boss's support for your service, right? Because every time you're gone, even if you're a number, you need to be replaced for the most part. Somebody needs to pick up your workload. And it's not just your boss, it's your coworkers. I actually call ESGR, which is another great organization you should be considering calling as opposed to you, Sarah. And I nominated my boss and my department uh, for their service to me. You don't understand what's happening when you're gone. Like, time doesn't freeze when you're gone. The corporation needs to still be profitable and still provide the goods or services that they're built to provide. You need to consider acknowledging your employer, not, not just your direct supervisor, but your company as a whole. Don't only complain when, you know, things are not going your way. Make sure you acknowledge your boss's service to you, your company's service to you. Don't only think of you, Sarah, automatically. Think about how am I as an employee? Am I doing everything I can to be a good employee? How good are they to me? Are they supportive of me and my service? Did they hire me knowing that I'm in the military? Or while I was hired here and I took off to the military, were they supportive of my plans? Acknowledge them. All right, guys, enough about this. Uh, remember, you know, if you're having trouble, it, nothing wrong with contacting you, Sarah, and getting some advice on how to handle the situation. But also, when things are going really well, don't forget to contact ESGR and ask them on acknowledging your bosses or your company service to you. See you in the next drive time. Peace.